Let me tell you a story about old Mayor Fred Everybody did just what he said Loved him so much, make a mean man change his ways He said, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours I'll get mine, then you'll get yours Lord, you know this town run smooth when he was here Mayor Fred, Mayor Fred, everybody did just what he said. Mayor Fred, Mayor Fred, make you smile when you were down. Rockford's a small, just a small town that, well, I remember back when we had two red lights here. Now we got one red light in the whole county. You can tell somebody like from Atlanta or Birmingham or whatever, when they drive up out here and they get out and they hit their auto locks on their vehicle. So it, it's a different environment. He got tired and he got old. You know that he's on that road. Well, if you ever go to Rocktown, ask anyone around. Mayor Fred, Mayor Fred, everybody did just what he said. Mayor Fred, Mayor Fred, make you smile when you were down. I've lived in Rockford almost 30 years. I love it here. I love it here. I mean, we moved up here from Florida and I wouldn't go back for nothing in the world. We got good people here. We've got Mikey, our local chief in police department. We've got one officer. Only one. That's all we need. It's quiet. It's, you don't have the hustle and bustle like you do in the bigger cities and all. Just about everybody knows each other. Pretty close knit. I wouldn't I wouldn't be anywhere else. We used to have a school there, so the community was thriving at that time. We were a close family, and we had school functions that everyone worked together. And they moved the schools to a central location, so that school had shut down. The community kind of fell apart. I guess you could say, because we, we didn't have a, a centralized place where we all saw each other. And I think Fred uh, changed that for us. Good luck. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. It's gonna be a good short evening come three o'clock. When I first met Fred, there's an old building across the street. It looks like an Alamo gas station. This guy had a woodworking business there. And Fred stayed there. And then when Kenny opened the package store, which has been defunct for mm, probably 17 years or so, or maybe 19, then Fred migrated down there and Kenny's wife, and he became the primary caregivers. I reckon I was his daddy. I took care of him. Me and ever who worked here, you know, we made sure he had food and got his shots and everything, a place to live, and he'd stay in the store most of the time to get ready to go out. He roamed all over Rockford. He had girlfriends all over town, all that. He, he wasn't shy. Okay, what I heard, and you can hear any damn thing in Rockford, some of which may or may not be true, is that there was a guy that lives out there by me that had carried a bunch of cows to a stock market in Montgomery, which is 50 miles away. And when he was leaving with the empty trailer, the guy that, there at the stockyard said, hey, how about giving this dog a ride? So I dropped him out on 18 at Union Church, which is between Kenny and my house. 
And then allegedly, supposedly, he migrated a little bit to Kenny's daughter's place and then to Kenny's and then supposedly followed Kenny's boy walked to town, which is, is probably two and a half miles. Uh, he followed my brother, Neil, to Rockford one day. Neil was walking and he stayed in Rockford, so we found out he was missing, so we went and got him and he kept jumping out of my husband's truck. So my husband said, I can't bring him home. He won't stay in the truck. So he just stayed there and began, people began to feed him around town and he was so friendly, they just fell in love with him. He became the town dog somehow. Dog, he would always make you smile. If ever you was feeling down, you pet him for a while. Good dog. He went to the courthouse, they fed him. He come here, he got fed. He went down the road, he got fed. Everywhere he went, everybody had a little jar just for Fred. The bank even still has a little doggy jar. We've got bones in here. We've got from little bitty bones to big bones because we have a lot of little dogs come. And then we have some that's broken up. So we have the little bitty ones for our little chihuahuas and our poodles and so forth, the little tiny terriers and so forth. And then we have big bones for the bigger dogs. And then we break some of them up sometimes for the in-between dogs. But we always give the dogs, when the dogs come in or come to the drive-thru, we give the dogs a milk bone. Fred was uh, uh, one of our very good account holders <laughs> here at First Bank. <laughs> he had a bank account here which took care of feeding him, uh, his doctor visits and so forth like that. Fred was a good dog. He was, you know, we couldn't let just any dog come in the bank, but we never had a problem with Fred. He would come in here. He'd come right through the door, right in. Uh, he knew that we would give him a treat. He, hey, he was an account holder. We had to let him in. <laughs> I've been here off and on since 99. So I've been, I've known Fred forever, even whenever I was in high school. So, cause I was working at an old wood shop down the road and he'd come and sit in there with me when I was working at the wood shop when I was like 15, 16 years old. He loved everybody. He did not have any hard feelings towards anybody. He was just a loving, caring little, Chunk of Love, that's what I called him. I, I, everybody's like, why do you call him Chunk of Love? Because he was just so chunky and he was just a chunk of love. You could always see Fred every once in a while. Must have been his job just to make folks smile. He was in the Christmas parade two or three times, uh, had his own float. He had an article in the Coos County News every week called A Dog's Life. He'd done real good stories. He was here till he passed away in December the 23rd, 2002. The morning he died, I went and picked him up and that same evening we buried him out here beside the old jail. It hurt, but I, I was tired of seeing him suffer. Everybody's listening. Yeah, but uh, you know, it, it hurt. A lot of people cried out there when we buried him, including me. Yeah. I don't do funerals, but that is one that I did go to. Everybody autographed his coffin. Well, that's the last funeral I went to, probably the last one I'll ever go to. We knew that we had lost something special. I know it's silly to think that about dogs sometimes because they're not human, but we really, the townspeople and my family really had gotten close to Fred, even though he was a dog. It was very sad. He had a really big effect on Rockford. Uh, 
the whole town mourned losing Fred. And after we lost him, several others wanted to have another town dog, but we told, nobody could take Fred's place. I don't know, it would take a very special dog with a very special personality. I think it did change the town because they were working for one thing, uh, a good thing to take care of him. And I can't think of anything that they've worked together like that in a long time. I think the people of Rockford, I don't think Fred would have been loved if the people of Rockford weren't loving, caring people. So it wasn't just all Fred. The, the people, um, the best came out in them when they were working to take care of him. I am a poor wayfaring stranger Just traveling through this world below Yet there's no sickness, no toil or danger In that bright land to which I go I'm going there to see my father. I'm going there no more to roam. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going over home. I'm going there see my Jesus I'm going there no more to roam I'm only going over Jordan I'm going over home In life he was a friend, companion a co-worker. In death, he's a legend. Because for most who knew him, Fred was Rockford. And for us, he's absolutely Alabama. I'm Fred Hunter, Fox 6 News. <laughs>